Let's talk about luxury real estate near Bellevue, Washington and Lake Washington. So when we think of sort of the creme de la creme, where do the, the fancy people live? In the east side, right near downtown Bellevue, there's a waterfront area uh, right along the coast of Lake Washington. And that is one of the most sought after areas. Clyde Hill is the hill just up the water from there. So I'll, I'll definitely let you know our local billionaire, Bill Gates, built his house in Medina, which is a, a, along the shore of Lake Washington. And just a couple blocks away up the hill, we find Clyde Hill. And that area seems to be one of the most popular for uh, redevelopment right now. I was just driving through that area recently, decided to get some footage for you guys so you can see what it's actually like. And as you go up to the top of the hill, even from the road, you can see some fantastic views of the lake. But there's quite a variety of homes in this area. So uh, Clyde Hill is really convenient from a commuting perspective. You're right by uh, the 520 floating bridge that goes east to west across Lake Washington. So you can um, head west and you'll come out right by the University of Washington on the west side and you can pop into downtown Seattle on I-5 or you can um, just you're very close to downtown Bellevue you probably wouldn't even have to get on the freeway although you're very close to 405 so you could certainly do that and um, 405 of course goes north and south on the east shore of Lake Washington so you'd come out up in Linwood to the north and you'd come out down by SeaTac Airport to the south so it's it's a loop off of the Interstate 5 which goes from Canada to Mexico and it is the major commuting corridor on the east side of the lake through Bellevue. Now in this area, traffic tends to be horrible, just in general, the Puget Sound, Seattle, Bellevue area, traffic is horrible. So when it comes to what people are willing to pay a premium for, being close to their work is very important for a lot of folks because time is money. And so this Clyde Hill location has a great commute access, whether you're going to Bellevue or Seattle. So I think that's a, a lot of what people are paying for. Also, because there are lakefront homes and lake view homes, there are a lot of nice lots here. And once you start uh, attracting a couple five to $10 million properties in the area, the values of the rest of the neighborhood tend to go up. Now, what I was seeing when I went here is what I will call infill projects. Uh, the idea is you find a lot that you like with maybe an older home. And this area was developed, you know, a while back because it's a great location. So some of the homes there tend to be older and just kind of regular. I mean, you'd be surprised that you have to pay two to three million to buy this house because it's not that fancy. But what ends up happening is that people will buy that house that's not that fancy knock the whole thing down and build themselves a beautiful new home and these homes can be uh, much more expensive they often have a view they often have a lot of square footage and beautiful finishes and amenities so the whole neighborhood benefits from these new homes coming in because it certainly raises property values but there's quite a discrepancy between just paying to get that good location and get into the neighborhood in an older home and actually buying one of the nice new luxury homes that's been built there. So that's just something to be aware of that you will see that variety. And as you go through, you know, driving the streets, it's not all gilded gold and fancy. It's, it's woodsy, it's nice, there are beautiful views, but um, it's not something where you feel like every single home is a mansion and you're just bowled over because you're so awed by its magnificence. In fact, I think it's more uh, in Seattle, you get this quite a bit. It's just that mix of uh, older and newer homes together. Uh, in some of the areas where they have new construction, uh, a builder can buy a larger parcel of land and build five, 10, 20 homes on it that are all uniform and all nice and all of the same age and quality. But that doesn't tend to happen very much here for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, the area is very developed already. Uh, we have so much water <laughs> and uh, we're really limited in where we can build. 
So the land that's buildable has been built for a long time. So we have a lot of older homes, we have a lot of apartment buildings, we, and the city is always moving toward higher density lots. So they would rather see a new condo go up with a restaurant on the ground floor and apartments higher up. That's what they were doing downtown. That's what they were encouraging with zoning and new development. Um, so now we're not seeing that at all in Clyde Hill and Medina and that type of a thing, but people are pretty much limited to one lot for the most part. Um, you might be able to get a side-by-side -side lot if you wanted to build a really large home or maybe a couple homes, but um, it tends to be that builders are not packing in townhomes or anything like that. They're trying to keep it nice and go for the maximum square footage in the space that's available to them. So I hope that gives you kind of an idea of what to expect when you visit Clyde Hill. If you're looking for a home in this area, uh, we can look at whatever the prices are at the time that you watch this, but I'm more than happy to help you kind of be the boots on the ground to get an idea of what you're looking at, what your options are. This is Emily Cressy with HomeProAssociates.com. My real estate broker is HomeSmart, and as always, I am here to serve.